right, what's up, fam? How y'all doing, man? How y'all living, y'all? Hope everybody's doing well, man. I missed y'all. I missed y'all for real. Um, bruh, in the in the time that's been gone, I don't like I don't like talking about things. You feel? I don't like talking about certain things when they first happen. You feel me? I don't like talking about death. I don't like I like I like to let shit ride. You feel me? Out of respect. You feel me? And just and just. I don't know. I just don't like talking about it. it, ain't, it ain't, shit don't sit right with me when, when people all da 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 when something first happens, bro. You gotta let shit breathe and give it time. And I still don't wanna I still don't wanna send um this man off, bro. I still do not wanna send Michael K. Williams off yet until we finish. You feel me? He's still here, he's still with us every day. You feel me? Energy never dies. But Omar still motherfucking breathing. And we ain't gonna send him off until we finished. Here on YouTube, you feel me? Out of respect for his work and 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 the character, um. So yo, I miss y'all, man. And and again, rest in power to Michael K. Williams, man. And I'm gonna just leave it at that for right now. So fuck, man. We got season three, bro. <laughs> Politics. This was this was the season that I looked forward to the most. Um, when we first started out coming, starting into the wire. Because I'm I'm deep I'm big into politics even though I don't I don't, I don't like it <laughs> I hate fucking politics but I'm big into fucking just knowing what the fuck is going on and what these motherfuckers is doing and laws and what legislation is being put forward like and what's fight and who's fighting for what like I'm not very interested in all these things because this is America and our politics are ran off of fucking money you feel me and who runs everything corporations big pharma all these. And the, and the wealthy, and just to leave it at that. These politicians do not, these senators are not working for their constituents. These senators are not working for their people. Um, they working for their donors, you feel me? And, with, and, with, and dark money interests and all these other types of things. So it's important, I feel, to pay attention to these things. And there's many people that come where I come from that don't fucking pay attention to none of that shit. Don't even care because it don't affect their lives. Like they don't think it affects their lives. But the shit that the shit that gets put forward really can shape a country in the in the next coming generations. You feel me? So these things are important. Bro, but as in the wire and as in <laughs> real life, many people don't give a fuck because they don't feel that Anything that these people are doing are going to ever affect or change their lives. So they don't give a fuck. But this season is about the death of fucking reform. And why reform just ain't real, bro. Like people, they politicians, um, police reform, all these other things. They People bring up reform, but it's not real, bro. Because these institutions are made to run exactly how they run, bro. A well-oiled machine. And the, and the individuals that are institutionalized that work in these fucking um institutions will never well there will never be no reform <laughs> nigga like i don't understand like it's not real yo it's not real and in the streets as well reform and, and that's a big thing that's been talked about going back to season one with d'angelo you feel me reform in the streets and, and violence and, and these type of things and stringer motherfucking bell bro the motherfucking goat <laughs> Fuck, I miss Stringer Bell, bro. I'm happy we getting into it right now, yo. I miss Stringer Bell. I'm happy we getting into it. And, um, yeah, I just, uh, much appreciation to all the subscribers I've made throughout season one and throughout season two, man. All the love in the world. Um, and to my people that was here before The Wire. You feel me? There was life before The Wire. You feel me? And there's, there will be a life after. So I appreciate all of y'all so much. I love this story and I love all y'all so much. And again, please let me know how you feel down below. Um, and uh, if there's any disagreements or anything, bro, we could talk about it, bro. I'm a fucking human being and I'm fucking sane. I ain't like these other motherfuckers on here, bro. <laughs> like, I'm fucking sane. So we could talk about whatever, man. Just let me know how you feel. And um, we're going to get right into it, bro. The Death of Reform, Season 3. Let's get it. Alright, before I press play, man, much love to all of y'all, man. All, every single one of y'all is too many names, so I can't name them all off the top of my head, man. But I appreciate all of y'all, man. I, I really do, man. I'm grateful, and I, I just, I'm, I'm happy I got content, you feel me, that's just, that's just love like this to this point, um, where people really want to, like, 
um, support even further, man. So I really appreciate y'all, man. Real shit. I don't, I don't go a day without without appreciating y'all, man, and being grateful. So thank you, real shit. And another thing before we get into this episode, this is my most anticipated season. It is what it is, but I'm very big into politics. I, uh, I don't believe most of the shit that comes out these motherfuckers' faces, bro. I mean, mouths. Especially Republicans. Fuck Democrats and Republicans. But especially <laughs> Republicans. These motherfuckers. So I don't believe shit that come out their mouths. But it's important and I like to pay attention to it. So yeah, man. This is my most anticipated season. You feel me? And I'm, I'm, I'm hyped about it. So let's get into it, man. And see what, they, what it got to give. I, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm kind of sad. Them towers be home to me. You gonna cry over a housing project now? Man, they should have blew them motherfuckers up a long time ago, you ask me. Man, it ain't all been bad. I mean, I done seen some shit happen up in them towers that still make me smile, yo. All right, hold up. Okay, so from what I just got right there, they, they, finna, they taking down the towers. They knocking that motherfucker down. But what Poop said was some real shit, you feel me? It don't matter how fucked up them projects is. It don't matter what bullshit you exposed to be living there and, and, and the, the horrors, the trauma that goes on um, that you have to suffer through. It don't matter through, throughout all of that, man. We still had good times here, bro, because this is where we from and it wasn't all bad, bro. It can't all be bad at all, at all times, you feel me? So that was just some real shit, man. I fuck with that. A few moments from now, Franklin Terrace Towers behind me which sadly came to represent some of this city's most entrenched problems. Fuck you. Do something about it. Man, I'm talking about people, memories and shit. They ain't the same. Look, they gonna tear this building down, they gonna build some new shit. But people, they don't give a fuck about people. You are very soon going to see low and moderately priced houses built in their place. <sighs> Look at these youngins, man. They, they become a season now, though. Bodie, I fucking love Bodie to death. Fuck all y'all that don't. Bodie may be fucking ignorant and may only know what he knows because he's from where he's from and that's all they know. Just like you, from where you from and you know only what the fuck you know. He ain't said no fucking lie, bro. People, they don't give a fuck about people. And then the next scene goes along and, and Mayor Royce talks about we're gonna we're gonna make some affordable housing here and all that. It's not gonna be affordable. And you go enrich yourself off that real real um real estate. You feel me? Enriching your own self while in office, not working for your constituents. People don't give a fuck about the mistakes have been made. But we will learn from those mistakes. Oh, really? Reform is not just a watchword with my administration. Uh, reform. I, I really don't like the word reform, the term reform. Because it don't change nothing, bruh. It don't change the system. You could put whatever police reform bill, whatever the fuck you want to do, bruh. But the same shit is going to continue to happen. You feel me? Like, you know, it don't matter. Like, I hate I hate when they bring up, politicians bring up reform. Shit, man, no matter how many times you get burnt, man, just keep on doing the same. Nigga, do not... Learn. I mean, look, all over the city, even out in the county, you had people. Coca dope 24 7. Where was it they go? The towers. Man, look, you live in the projects, you ain't shit. But you slaying product there? You got the game by the ass, man. That's true. Shit. Best territory in the city from y'all. You wanna crawl over some shit, crawl over that. <laughs> you want to cry over some shit? Cry over that. <laughs> yo, Bodie's fucked up. Like his mentality, yo. Like, but I, but I love him though, man. One. Fuck niggas. So what about all the people that lived in those towers? Where they at? Everybody clapping about this shit like oh, shit. All of that shit is gonna fuck up everybody's lungs out there In the whole city, everybody out on the streets right now So you wanted to take down the towers, what's your plan now? What is your reform plan? The fuck, man, this is already getting me pissed off <laughs> God, Okay That was a cool opening though you feel me? It ain't, it ain't, it, 
I don't think there will ever be an opening like the first episode, bro. Like, with, with, rest in power to Snot Boogie, bro. Real shit. They still got that fuck shit right there. Re rest in power to Snot Boogie, man. Real shit. No matter how many times you get burned, you just keep doing the same. I got a lot to say about this intro, man. Y'all know the intros be some of the best parts of the wire, man. And this, and this would go. Matter of fact, I'm not even gonna get into it because I'm gonna do a ranking for every intro. I'm gonna do a ranking for everything when it comes to the wire. I'm gonna come up with a top 50 characters lit. That's gonna be the hardest shit in the world. But I'm gonna do it for y'all when we finish the wire, man. I love this opening. You feel me? And step by step, we gonna go through this. Poot, I love what Poot said, bro. Poot, I love Poot's character, man. I love that young man. This man said, you know, ain't it ain't all been bad. You feel me? I didn't have some, I didn't have some memories in them towers that I could still look at and make me smile to this day, bro. And that's real shit. Just in, no matter what environment you in, no matter what ghetto you come from, you feel me? There were all, there was always good times, bro. Even though shit is fucked up. Even though, like, I don't need to get into detail about how shit is fucked up. I don't think I need to do that. But there are still moments, you feel me, that can make that can make someone smile. Or even in the, the hardest slums in the world, where all the kids is walking around barefoot and shit, there is still some good moments, you feel me, that you gotta, that you gotta remember and hold tight. Mayor Royce, this punk motherfucker said that the towers became home to some of the city's most horrible like place and tragedies you feel me now you're unleashing those horrors onto the rest of the people in these communities throughout the city because with y'all tearing down this tower all y'all doing y'all not y'all not trying to fix the problem or understand the problem or get to the problem no y'all all y'all doing is dispersing it throughout the city bro that's all you doing is dispersing all these drug dealers that were selling dope in these towers throughout the city and throughout each of these corners. Now the towers getting blown the fuck up. <laughs> getting blown the fuck up while all these people clap. Clap as, as, as the smoke disperses. And as all the problems and all the violence from those towers are going to spread throughout these streets of Baltimore. You feel me? Reform. It's not a, it's not a, it's, a, it's not just so whatever, whatever for my, for my campaign. <laughs> man, fuck Mayor Royce and everyone like him. Reform is not real, bro. It's just something to be said to say, hey, we're attempting to fix a problem that y'all don't really want to fix and won't be fixed. Plain and simple. Also, my bad, I had to skip the funny moments with uh, Bodie, you feel me? Because there was just too much being said from Pooh and, and too much being said from Royce that I needed that I felt that was just so much more important than the comedic point. The Wire. Never get used to that sound, boy. <laughs> the Wire. Be happy I made it. I'm curious to meet the new players in this season, bro. I know there gotta be a whole bunch, a whole bunch of new players, cuz. Narcos. The block is hot, the block is hot. The block is hot, the block is hot. She hands! She hands! She hands! Get the walk! Y'all quick to pull out a fucking gun and wave it in motherfuckers' faces, boy, I swear. Lady son, step light. Is that the stash? <laughs> 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 Fucked up. He should have sat right there, boy. He shouldn't have moved. Hey, listen to me, you little fucking piece of shit. I'm gonna tell you one thing and one thing only about the Western boys you are playing with. <laughs> <laughs> we do not we lose. Do not we do not forget. That's a bar. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> fuck them. Fuck all of them. But I like that. <laughs> we will not kick the living shit out of you. Yeah. But if you make us go into the weeds for you, it's legal. or if you make us come back out here tomorrow night, catch you on the corner, I swear to fucking Christ, we will beat you longer and harder than you beat your own dick. This is his greatest scene. <laughs> this is <laughs> 
<laughs> that shit was fire. Yo, this is his greatest scene so far, bro. Episode one, season three. That <laughs> more than you beat your dick. <laughs> I love this entire scene with both Herc and Carver. You will not. You don't hear me say it all. I love this entire scene, man. And the only thing I got to say is, bro, these grown ass men. These grown ass men get get pleasure and enjoyment out of beating and brutalizing little boys. Little 10 year olds, 9 year olds, they get fucking, they get pleasure out of that shit. And get to go home to their wives and, 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 and families and act like they're good people. <laughs> it's doing the right thing for the world. <laughs> Saving the world. That's all I gotta say, bro. These aren't men. None of them. We need to take the rest of them low rises and all them Fayette Street corners. Take them. Take him how, Mr. Bodie? Yeah, to come up with a solution. Don't just come up saying some shit. Come up, come up with the whole plan. Nah, man, we done worrying about territory, man. What corner we got, what project. Game ain't about that no more. It's about product. Okay. Chair recognize Slim Charles. Hold on. I got something to say, though. That, that's not true what he just said. He said it, it, all that other shit don't matter no more. It's all about product. Because with them towers, y'all had merchandise, as Prop Joe would say. Y'all had a clear-cut place to sell and move dope, and nobody's moving in on nothing. But now that you don't have a place, a, a specific place to be at, now you're going to be on the streets. What other players in, in what other players we going to meet or in this game that's going to want... Them streets that y'all are on, occupying since the towers is done for now. You feel me? So we gonna get into it, bro. It is about territory as well, bro. It's not just about product. Shit, our people got to stand somewhere, don't it? I mean, all the product in the world don't mean nothing if you constantly getting your ass whipped for standing on another fool's corner. That's a bar. That's what I just said. Fuck. Yo, get it straight. Your territory ain't gonna mean shit if your product is weak. That's facts. That's true. We learned that. <laughs> we learned that from season two. So the chances are we gonna be able to bring in the competition by offering the re up with us from our package. Smart. You know I mean? But there's gonna be somebody who want it, what you got. Period. They don't want nothing off you. They don't want it off your package. They they gonna want and take what you got. And later for that gangster bullshit. Facts. Yeah. I agree. That's a bar. Do the chair know we gonna look like some punk ass bitches out there? Motherfucker, I will punk your ass. Yo, say yo, shit. Trey, what? Trey, who did have the floor, Shut man? Shut the fuck up, man. This nigga too ignorant to have the fucking floor. That's a bar. <laughs> this nigga too ignorant. <laughs> I got pissed off by that. <laughs> a new fucking light. Start thinking about this shit like some grown fucking men. I agree. Got some niggas off the fucking corner. You heard me? This is fire. This is, I, I, don't, I don't fuck with this man, bro. Fuck him. Nigga, on everything. But that was some real shit. He killed that whole scene, bro. Real shit. I ain't going front. And I'm curious in that other cat, uh, who who he got introduced to? Slim, Slim or some shit? What his name was? So I'm interested in him. He had the same I thought as me. Now, Russell Stringer Bell. With all due respect, the game ain't just about product just because you say so. Bro, and all the love and respect for Brother Slim Charles, man, one of the goats. <laughs> one of the goats. One of the coldest cats in this show and one of the most respected men and figures on this show to me. You feel me? God damn, Slim Charles ain't never told a motherfucking lie, bruh. Ain't never. And you better listen when Slim Charles speak, bruh. You better stop talking, bruh. Stop it. <laughs> stop it, bruh. And yet again, bruh, my nigga poop. Is the chair gonna know we gonna look like some punk ass bitches out there? Motherfucker, you. <laughs> he got so angry, bruh. He got so fucking angry because a nigga is telling you the motherfucking truth, right? And you don't want to accept it. I guarantee if we can push this thing a level or two above the street, we're going to start seeing Prop Joe himself. We start seeing Joe, we're going to see Stringer. I can't ask it's a bar. That's facts. Either we figure a way to punch through the wall, or we let it go. <laughs> I mean, no, he ain't. <laughs> he don't do that. He ain't with that. Now, which way's north? 
point. <laughs> I, I'm curious in him, bro. Like I, I remember his scene from last season, man. His dialogue, yo. So. Where you at, shit, bird? You're in handcuffs in my house, looking stupid, ain't you? Why the fuck you talking to him like that? I'm telling you, this is real life shit, bro. Like I've been talked to like that before, bro. <laughs> we pursued and recovered the bag, but no drugs. And they whooped my ass. Western District way. So what did we learn? Using half my district canine and the copter to bring a 14 year old to bay. What did we learn? That you can't raise up and run from a drug corner in Sector One without my boot finding your ass. I really hate them motherfuckers, yo. I really, <laughs> I will fight them over and over again. I both of them at the same time. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, oh man, I really don't like them dudes, bro. They really remind me of of, of past encounters I've had with with police officers, bro. Like real shit. Again, bro. Stupid motherfuckers calling other people stupid. <laughs> And then again, the Western District way is to beat kids because you feel like it. Real men. They really do. Bubbles and this motherfucker still at it on the block. What's up? Look what they did to my ride. Do it or don't, but I got some place to be. Hold up, hold up. That who the fuck is this? <laughs> who the fuck is this, bro? Because that was some calculated, like ruthless shit right there, bro. Do it or don't, but I got some place to be. Meaning I don't give a fuck if you pull that trigger or you don't, my nigga. I don't care if you blow his shit in right now, but you're not gonna interrupt what I got going on, bro. You feel me? You're not gonna take away from my time. So that was some that was some ruthless that was some shit right there. So I'm curious in this dude as well. Y'all got to pay something, anything, to be a principal here. We, if we had a diamond, you'd have a diamond. Look, 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 we're a little insufficient right now, okay? We're on our way to the metal man. We'll come back and pay for everything, I promise you. So y'all can't afford to make mistakes since y'all that that in, insufficient. Now, now, now it's time, bruh. It's time, cuz. <laughs> For one of the coldest introductions to any motherfucking... If there was a real antagonist in this series, there ain't no good or evil, bro. This is real life. But if there was any motherfucker that was... Uh, there was no greater villain, bro. There is no greater villain or antagonist than fucking Marlo Stanfield, bro. There ain't not one, bro. Ain't nobody can compare from no series, bro. Do it or don't. But I got some place to be. I mean, I don't give a fuck if you take that man's life, bro. But you not, you not going to take away from my time. You feel me? One of the cold, I ain't got nothing more to say. One of the coldest introductions. You don't even see this man again in the fucking episode. This is the only time you see him. This was, and it was just a, a one minute scene. 30 seconds, 10 seconds, bro. The fuck is wrong with you, man? Get your shit together. You ain't got no pants. Oh, they hey, just took hey. y'all shit off. <laughs> I do indeed. <clears throat> fuck you. Additionally, we've put the district flex. <laughs> he a good actor, man. <laughs> that dude, he be killing roles, bro. Whatever role he's in, man, he be killing roles, so. Our last best hope. Talking this motherfucker I ever heard on a wiretap. Motherfuckers love to talk. But if we take him off with a hand-to-hand... -hand, they gotta promote someone to replace him. And why drag? One thing about our boy? That's Prop Joe's nephew. <laughs> On his mama's side. They got him. They got him, boy. I'm telling you, the ace, bro. This shit ain't, ain't nothing changed since season one, bro. Without Lester Freeman, bro, they fought. Y'all know he ain't got pants. Oh, you. What? Unbelievable. <laughs> That's nothing. After losing to Reagan, Carter comes back. Fuck Ronald Wilson Reagan, pussy. And that is from whence I come. Proud son of the fighting first district. But the truth is... What's the truth? You get the shit out of the stick, you come to me. 
Not publicly. I know you can't cross the mayor publicly, but back door, and we can turn this but thing around. But long ago, around. when I was just starting out in the department, I had the good fortune to be taught a little something about chain of command. <laughs> Episode one. Season one. Leave a tip if you want. Yeah, he already bought, cuz. <laughs> you can't buy his ass. He already he already sold. <laughs> I'm curious about that dude though. Weebay! That's my nigga, bruh. Free Weebay, bruh. I don't give a fuck. You know, I'm I'm I'ma wait to talk about the great white savior. <laughs> I'ma wait. That's a David Simon's words too, because I know people gonna look at me like I'm trying to be I'm being racist when I say that. But the white savior trope is normal, bruh. <laughs> In movies, TVs, going back to the beginning of time, whatever, whatever. The white savior, you feel me? Carcetti, I ain't gonna talk about him right now, you feel me? I'ma wait till the second part. But what I did think about just now is it's interesting how their relationship is later on between Carcetti and Burrell. You feel me? And what Carcetti does to Burrell. So it's interesting. It would have things could have been different if he would have aligned with, with Carcetti right now. You feel me? But hey, chain of command. And when it's not your turn, motherfucker. Oh, oh, by the way, again. Oh, just just for the just for the love of it. Uh fuck Ronald Wilson Reagan yet again. I will say that every every time, nigga. And fuck Jimmy Carter too. Avon, what's happening? FA. Got real quiet during that walk. <laughs> <laughs> Real quiet. They literally stopped the game so Ava could walk across the field. <laughs> and they sat there in silence. <laughs> the day you go in, the day you come out. I don't know. I did 14 years. And you still standing. A little stretch, true. But you're still a soldier, right? Soldado. Hmm, that was interesting. A lot of things is different now since you've been up in here. You'll see. A lot of changes. A good soldier ain't gonna lack for work. Let's get to it, bro. He ain't interested, though. I don't know his name, but he ain't he ain't interested in all that shit, the way it seems. Joint might have broke him. Boss, you talking about a homie walked up and shot Elijah Davis. Broad daylight at Pennsylvania and Gold. Did pick up the phone down 911. Told the police I just shot a nigga. Come get him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a lot to say right there. Hold up. Now that shit was dope, man. Like real, like real shit. I I, I like where we go with all these new characters, bro. That shit was interesting, man. From what it gave off is basically that dude is the OG. <laughs> like real shit, he is the real OG. Like that that was WeeBay before WeeBay was WeeBay. You feel me? And he been locked up for fourteen years. And from all that all that conversation that Avon was having, he wasn't really paying no mind to it. He wasn't giving off anything. But when it when it came to the things that um Avon was saying regarding the streets and you know putting in work and, and, and doing what you do, you feel me, what they know of him to do. Um and he wasn't it, it seemed like he wasn't feeling or, or feeding into any of that. So I'm real curious about his storyline and and the choices he's gonna decide to make. Um after getting out and being released and is he going to go back to his old life or is he is he is he does he have another newfound path you feel me that he feels he must take at this point in at this point in his life so that was dope man i, re I really love that scene free we free we bay free we bay i have a lot to say about cuddy because this this his story him, him as a person you feel me it hits home Cause I know Cuddy's, I know a Cuddy. You feel me? Like I know, like his story hits home so hard, man. And I love his story and I love his character. The only real reform, you feel me, comes from within yourself. The only real reform in life comes from within yourself, bro. I got more to say about Cuddy in part two. Everything I want to say. But to start this out, man, Avon, bro, the motherfucking king, stay the motherfucking king. 
And this is just, this ain't the best scene in this episode, but it's the coolest, bro. <laughs> just the fact that they did, they, they let this man walk across, they cut, they, <laughs> they waved off the game and let that man walk across the field and many of them turn their backs to him too and they, they don't even want to look at him and look in his, look in his eyes bro that's some shit bro <laughs> that's some the respect is, is is insane for this man but as well as free we bay y'all know what the fuck it is with me free my nigga bro free the og bro <laughs> but as well as the whole p point of we bay thinks just because of Cuddy's past actions, that Cuddy's still the same. You feel me? But Avon can see, Avon is aware. You feel me? He That's what makes him a good leader at, at times. You feel me? He ain't the best leader, but he has many great attributes as a leader. And one of them is being aware. You feel me? Of the people around you. Um, and Cuddy, he could see it off rip from just the conversation and just Cuddy's body language, really, because Cuddy didn't speak much. Cuddy's body language, really, that Cuddy ain't really about this life no more. You feel me? So that was just dope. The act that Cuddy committed, you feel me? You talking about a man that shot Rogers Davis, nigga, and called the police and said, come here and get it, nigga. I shot him. You feel me? Like, just the, just the thought of this man being away for 15 years over that, and he turned himself in. It's just something in its own, bro. This man, we got more to say come part two. I appreciate all my supporters. Y'all know what it is with me. I'm coming with part two. I got you. You know what it is. Y'all be safe. Enjoy, and I'll see you in the next. Peace.